You know, I have a really passionate desire for the Old Testament. A lot of people don't like reading the Old Testament, but I love reading the Old Testament. And once a year, I get to get through this amazing section of the Bible. And uh, Genesis is one of my favorite books. And I'm on my 10th read through right now. I just finished the Bible uh, last month or the, actually a couple weeks ago. Um, and uh, I'm on my 10th read through. And one of my favorite stories is Joseph. One of my all time favorite stories or recountings in scriptures of Joseph and his plight. And I, I love it because it's just so real. And it, it is so much, much truth in what happened to Joseph that you can apply to your life. And right now I'm in Genesis 42 and we're at the point when Joseph, Joseph has just finished his decade long sentence in, in jail. Uh, and we know from Genesis 41, 46, that Joseph was 30 years old when he became governor of Egypt. And I'm at the point now where Joseph is the governor. He's ruling right under Pharaoh, second most important person in Egypt. And he sees his brothers. His brothers have been sent on a mission by Jacob for food because a seven year famine is coming and he sees them. And it's almost at this point where you want to, it's almost, you, you want to weep. It's like that you get this knot because you feel what Joseph feels. You feel that, that betrayal. And this is what's so important. And this is what separates Christians from every other sinner in this world. We fear God. Everything we do, we do to the glory of God. And that is what makes us righteous. Although we still sin, we have been legally declared righteous and we live as such. We are not without sin, but we live to the glory of God. We live fearing God. And that separates us from everyone else in this world. Joseph feared the Lord. It is the exact reason why he did not sleep with Potiphar's wife. He didn't say, how can I do this great sin against Potiphar? How can I do this great sin against God? And that's what it is. That's what keeps us in line. That's what keeps us from falling. And that's exactly what the world does not have. And that's why those in the world cannot be trusted. And the Bible tells us the heart is deceitfully wicked and cannot be trusted. Joseph sees his brothers and I can, it's like, I'm there with him. It's like, you can feel it. They did this to me. They, they, they sold me off as though I was nothing, threw me away. Like I was trash, man. I want, I want my revenge. Eye for an eye. I got the power now. I can, I can kill them. I can do whatever I want to do to these people. Okay. That's what would transpire if Joseph was lost. That's what would transpire if Joseph wasn't the Lord's. But Joseph declares in Genesis 42, 18, I fear the Lord. Boldly, I fear the Lord. It's not going to be an eye for an eye. It can't be. Joseph weeps. We know the point where Joseph weeps and he comes out and he confesses to his brothers who he is because they don't recognize him. The point is, can you feel that? What Joseph must have felt being sold off, enslaved. What a great God we serve, that they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And even, I like how even when God imprisoned Joseph, it says that Joseph was so respected that even the guards placed him in a position of respect to where he was the person that everyone that was in prison came to for advice, for wisdom. So even while he was in prison, God was showing him favor. God was protecting him. It's that Romans 8, 28, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those that love him. God's always working for our good. If you are his, if you truly are his, God is working for your good, even in situations where you don't see any good. Joseph comes out, can you imagine? And he's governor of Egypt, second most important person of all Egypt at the time, the most important nation on the planet, the most powerful, the most wealthiest nation on the planet. And he's the governor. What a good God we serve. But I make this video so that we can just remember, meditate on this fact. Regardless of what's happening in life, you must always come back to, if you are a Christian, we do this for the Lord. We love for the Lord. We forgive for the Lord. It's all about him.